Hey guys, welcome to Ally Edge. I forgot my tripod, so I'll just hold the camera. Um, we just got back from the Big Ideas uh, deal that we were doing in the cities over in Hinkley, and we had a really good time. I'm just exhausted. It was a long couple of days that we were there. And when I got back uh, the other night before we left, I put the new welding table inside the shop. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll show you the welding table compared to my old one, and then I'll kind of explain to what I'm gonna do on the table. And I got a lot of work to do today, so I got to haul ass, get going on some of this stuff. Um, I got to get Rogue moved because we got the uh, steering rack and pinion for the 35 finally. And uh, thanks to Paco, he had the idea of uh, coming up with uh, changing it out to manual steering or manual rack and pinion instead of using the uh, power steering pump and all the lines and stuff. Because the, the car actually, it's so easy to steer, it doesn't even need power steering. And with power steering going down the road, it kind of felt really funny. It was like almost too touchy where you would almost ditch the car, you know, when you, when you were trying to control it or whatever, driving down the road, like if, if anything, you know, if a bump or anything in the road uh, would grab the steering wheel, it, you know, it was just way, way too touchy. So I think manual steering, uh, manual rack and pinion is the way to go on this car. And I think he was right. So we're going to try to do that. I'm going to get the 35 pulled out today. I'll turn the camera around and show where we're at. So we're finally getting going on some stuff because we've been super busy with everything else that's going on. I got the frame turned sideways for Rogue right here. I'm gonna try to get that thing outside, get it sandblasted. I have this truck that we're gonna um, try to get some patches done on, on the floor, get the floor built so we can get it over to the body shop. The 35, we finally got all the parts for that. That's the rack and pinion that's sitting right here on top of the tool chest or toolbox. And then uh, we're, we're gonna start hauling ass on Rogue and trying to get her done. Um, the main thing that I'm gonna do today is I'm scared that on the welding table, the new one, I'm scared that somebody's gonna get cut. Um, Tim, when he welded this thing, he blew this thing together really quick. And, uh, you know, it, it's not, I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm just saying he was in a hurry to get it done. Cause I, we asked him to get it done in a, in a hurry, which was awesome. <clears throat> so we're going to just take a grinder real quick and kind of round off some of these edges and clean up this stuff here because it's like a razor. I don't want, you know, the dog or somebody to get hurt on this, you know, grabbing it or bumping into it or whatever. And, uh, this, this welding table, like I was saying the other day, the guy did a phenomenal job and it's a uh, custom railings plus LLC and it's Tim and here's his, uh, you could text him or call him. Here's his address and phone number and his email. And you can see the size of the table. That's my old table and that's four by eight. And now you can see the size of the new table inside the shop. And yes, it's all dirty because it was out in the rain for a couple days, which it's a welding table. It's not gonna hurt a damn thing. But you can see the size of the, the difference with the tables. And what I did is I had him put this table, the, the height is exactly the same size as my old welding table. So if I wanna use that one and that one together, I bump them up, make an L or make it one big long table or whatever. And I'm getting uh, the mag drill real soon and then we'll lay out the holes on this thing and that'll be another project where like every four inch, I'll, you know, uh, lay out the holes across the table and we'll drill this thing. That way we got a layout table. So it should be very, very nice. Super nice to have this in the shop finally. And it's going actually right where Rogue is sitting right here. We're gonna have the table there, but I gotta move some cars around today and I'll get this thing moved around and then uh, get that 35 out of there so I can get it going and get on it. And as I'm doing that, I'll kind of film. So all I'm doing is I'm grinding these edges on this edge here. It's round, so I'm just kind of cleaning it up because it's real rough on the hands. And then the edges are like razors. I'm gonna clean those up. And then right here is like razor sharp. So I'll get, I'll just kind of round them over a little bit, clean them up. No, I'm not gonna take off a bunch of material, but wear safety glasses, don't be a dumbass.
So this is what I'm using on the uh, table right now after I ground it down. And when I say I ground it down, I was using a, uh, what grid is this damn thing? Yeah, I can't even read what grid it is. It's, it's not, it's like an 80 or something grit, uh, flapper sander wheel. The other one that I have on the grinder right now is the same thing. But all I did was I wanted to polish that metal a little bit. So it's just knocking off the uh, surface rust. And then I'm gonna run it, run it uh, use super clean to wipe it down real good. And then after that, <clears throat> after I use the super clean and wipe it down, I'm gonna wipe it down with uh, with uh, automotive Carnuba car wax. And then when I get some beeswax, I'll heat this table and I'll run beeswax on the whole thing. And then what that'll do is you can take this thing outside and sit it for years and it won't even rust. It's, it works really nice because the beeswax, with the heat and the beeswax, it'll actually uh, flow into the metal and it'll make like a coating on it, which is really nice. And that, that automotive Carnuba car wax, you polish the whole table just real quick. It doesn't have to be nothing fancy, but what it does is it keeps it where it's kind of like, I wouldn't say waterproof, but it like, uh, it doesn't let it rust and it works really good. Sorry about the camera's all jacked up. I need to get a new tripod, but anyways, uh, super clean. Thank you for, uh, I want to thank one of our sponsors, super clean for uh, sending this stuff to us. So I'm going to use this stuff on here now and we'll get it all sprayed down and go from there. Pretty much just gonna do the whole table like this and just wipe it down after it sits for a few minutes. I think I might even do this in sections, so. Cause it's gonna be kinda stinky and messy. And the lines that are running through the table, those are not weld lines or nothing like that. Those are actually uh, lines from the strap sitting in the rain on the trailer. Now you can see it gives it that sheen after you do the, use that super clean. And this is the foaming, can of foaming super clean. It doesn't matter if you use this or just a regular old school style. But the next step, I'll take a uh, isopropyl alcohol. And this is obviously just like, uh, you know, doctors use it or whatever in medical stuff. And you wanna be careful too when, where you throw these rags when you're done because you, don't, you obviously don't wanna leave them in the garbage can because, uh, you know, they are flammable and especially alcohol, it can burn and uh, you can't see it burning. It burns invisible. So be real careful with that stuff, so. And then all this does is this picks up every last bit of that uh, crap left over from any of the cleaners that you put on the table. And then it'll, it'll dry, you know, 100% clean so it's nice and spotless on the table. And get the thing wiped down and then what I'll do is I'll run over and grab uh, the Carnuba wax, wipe it down with that next. And then uh, the table is gonna be ready to use. And then this will dry where it's super clean, just nice and smooth and 